What's up, chat? I counted every marimba note in DCI 2024, and here's the data. But first, if you didn't know already, you can see a video of me playing a lick from each of these groups with the music on YouTube Shorts or on Instagram. Be sure to stick around to the end, where I reveal where I would have auditioned if I had the knowledge I have now and wasn't aged out for the 2024 season. Here we have top 12 ranked by competitive order. We can re-rank this by number of pitches played. Here we see Colts winning first place with 4,200 pitches, then Cavaliers in second, and Vanguard in third. Interesting about this graph or this table is we can see that top five is represented in inverse order relative to their competitive success. And then on either side at the very top and at the bottom, we have the rest of the groups. Um, we can also highlight this column to find the average, and we see that the average number of notes played by, or pitches played by a center marimba this year was 3,200 pitches. We can reorder by number of attacks. Remember, a block court is four pitches but one attack, and find that Troopers takes first place, followed by Cavaliers and Crown. Interesting enough, Cavaliers and Crown were only two attacks separate. This means that any error possible, basically, in my counting could have decided second or third. So I'm going to give it to Cavaliers, but know that it's, it's likely that across counting 500-ish measures for each of these groups, I might have been off by one or two. Here's the ranking of pitches per attack with Colts in first, Boston in second, and Phantom in third. And we see how Colts was able to dominate the number of pitches while having less than attacks by having such a high ratio of pitches per attack. Here we can resort by average pitches per second. Now this is averaging per measure, and I filtered to only include measures with more than one note. Um, so we're not including a measure that just has a release or just has a symbol note. Um, so it has to have at least two notes for it to be included in this. And then here we see Colts taking first, followed by Blue Coats, then Blue Devils, um, then Phantom. Um, and interesting to note, we can see top five all represented within the top six um, groups here um, for having, uh, we could call it denser music, or the, the most dense music. Um, very, very interesting correlation to find. And here as well as the median, because we know averages are prone to skew um, of pitches per second. Once again, this is filtered to only include measures with more than one note. I mean, we see Colts in first, followed by Boston and Phantom. And once again, we see top five all represented um, with having a higher than average median pitches per second. Um, maybe we could view this as having more harmonic density while playing. Finally, we can sort by max pitches per second. Now, this is aggregated per individual measure. Um, so if, if there was just like a super fast Herta, it probably wouldn't count unless there happened to be a 116 measure, which I know no group had. Um, and we see Blue Coats and Vanguard tying for first, followed by Troopers in third, and then uh, Blue Devils and Cavaliers tying for fourth. Now, you may be wondering, how do we have two ties in top five? Uh, well, this is a measure of block courts at 200, and this is a measure of block courts at 180. Um, so very common tempos, and the, the way to win this caption is just either play hands together or hand split block chords. Next, let's take a look at hand speed as calculated by the number of attacks on the previous page. This is aggregated per measure and expressed as if it was a continuous measure of 16th notes at a given hand speed. So first, we can sort by the average, seeing Blue Devils take first, followed by Mandarins, followed by Troopers. Then we can sort by the median, seeing uh, Mandarins pull up to the front, followed by Vanguard, then followed by the Blue Devils. Then we can sort by the 60th percentile. Think about this as 40% of the measures played by the Mandarins are faster than a 16th note hand speed at a march tempo of 120. Then we can sort by the 70th percentile, seeing Mandarins remain in first, followed by Blue Devils, followed by Crown. So while Mandarins might not have had as many pitches as the other groups, the pitches they did have happened at a faster rate um, than other people. Um, next, we can sort by the 80th percentile, see Blue Devils coming up to first, followed by Mandarins, followed by Cavaliers. Then we can sort by the 90th percentile, seeing Boston pull up to the front, followed by the Blue Devils, then the Blue Stars. So 10% of Boston's measures were faster than a 16th note hand speed at 186 BPM. Finally, we can sort by the max hand speed. We see Crown pulling to the front, followed by Troopers, followed by Phantom. Let's take a look at each of these measures and see what had these groups playing so fast. First, we have Madison in 12th with the 16th notes at 188 BPM. Next, we have Mandarins and Blue Stars tying for 10th with these 16th notes at 192 BPM. Here's Mandy's. 
and here's blue stars. Next we have Boston in 9th with these 16th notes at 200 BPM. Next we have Blue Devils in 8th with these 16th notes of triplets at 172 BPM. Next we have Colts in 7th with these 16th notes of triplets at 180 BPM. <laughs> these are really fast. Next we have Cavaliers in 6th with these 9th at 180 BPM. I bet none of them would have guessed that this was actually their fastest lick of the season. Next we have Blue Coats and Vanguard tying for 4th with these 16th notes at 208 BPM. And here's Blue Coats. Vanguard probably wins because theirs was longer. Next, we have Phantom in third with these six tuplets at 144 BPM. In second, we have Troopers with these crazy fast sixes at 168 BPM. If you haven't seen this part of the show, you gotta go check it out. And in first, we have Crown with this triplet roll-like figure at 168 BPM. Next, let's look at who is most useful by calculating the percent of time playing by using measures that have notes versus measures that don't have notes. Here we have the groups sorted in competitive order. We can resort by usefulness or utilization calculated by percent of time playing. Here we see Cavaliers, the undisputed champion, with playing for 78% of the show. That's, that's crazy. Only resting for about 20% of your show. Next, we have Vanguard in second and Troopers in third. And before the final part of this episode, where I talk about where I would have wanted to march for this last season, let's take a moment and appreciate that I've counted the notes by hand for 45 groups, or 45 different, like, lines, like, for, for marimbas and vibes included from this past WGI and, and DCI. Um, we, we can highlight the total number of pitches to see that by hand I've counted 87,000 notes. <laughs> <laughs> that's ridiculous all right let's who, where would i want to march <laughs> every season countless musicians have to make the decision of which core they're going to spend their time with and which core they're going to go and audition for now, this is made off of a lot of personal experience this is made off of taste this is made off of what they do the year before um and after having counted all the notes which meant i had to read their entire score um, and I read everyone's music twice, once to get all the tempos and rehearsal letters and the, the measures and the, the meters, um, and then another time just to count all the notes. Um, then after I did that, I had to pick what lick I wanted to play from all these groups. So I, I score studied and I watched every video I could find of every one of these marimba lines um, on YouTube. Um, and then I learned part of every single one of those shows. Um, so I have a little bit of experience about, okay, where would I want to go this year? Um, that's what I'm basing this off of. of uh, what book would I want to play? What did I see based on the content they put out? Um, what is my, my experience based on the music I read? Um, I want to preface this and say it would be an honor to march any of these groups. And I'm so proud to see all of the amazing work done by Front Ensembles this year. Um, but like any person auditioning, um, sadly, I'm aged out, but like any person auditioning, they have to make a decision on where they would go, um, and here's the decisions I think I would make. Um, so in 12th place, the group I would go to um, would be the Madison Scouts. Um, I, I thought they had a phenomenal year. I love their motif um, with, I believe it was Toxic that played over and over and over again, um, and I had a lot of fun learning their music. Uh, the 11th group I would pick to go to would be Blue Stars. And once again, great year for the core. Love the theme throughout um, space and how it connected that to our lives. Um, my my tenth choice to go to would be the Mandarins. Um, really, really love their arrangement of agape, and they, they had so much going for them. Andy Fieldback has done a great job with the core the last few years, and I'm really sad to see him go. Um, the next group I would choose, ninth, would be Phantom. I think Phantom had a great year. I, I loved their opener for the Marimbas. I, I thought it was so much fun to learn and play, and I, I was so glad to see them beef it up so much from the early season. Um, same with their closer. They added so many more notes. I mean, it was really cool to see. I think Phantom's really on the up. Um, the next group I would choose to go to would be Crown. Um, another one where they've changed staffs, drum corps staffs change so uh, frequently. Um, but if I was auditioning for 2024 on um, this past season, I, I, I would have gone to Crown as my eighth choice. Loved all the, the multi-percussion stuff they did. I think these members had more on their keyboard um, than any other marimba line. So it was really cool to see all the triplet roles. They got to play with both their mallets and with sticks. Um, a really, really cool year for them. Next would be my seventh choice would be Cavaliers. Um, Cavaliers front ensemble is always a joy to watch. I, I love their, their consistency in performance from player to player. I love their consistency in technique. I mean, I loved all the Kratali stuff they got to do this year, and they never stopped playing. It would have been a really fun year to march Cavaliers. Um, my sixth choice 
um, would have been Colts. Colts uh, really an underdog for me um, these last few years for front ensembles. I, I think they play so clean every year. They have so many notes. Um, and I mean, I really love the direction that the core has gone under um, with their, their percussion staff these last few years. Um, and now for my top five, my the fifth group I would have chosen to audition for, uh, Boston. Um, I, I love what Ian Moyer is doing with Boston. I, I love the front ensemble vibe, um, the, the arrangement and how clean they were in, in the final slots. I got to hear um, and really, really enjoy this group. I think the percussion has been on the rise for the last few years with them. Um, it would be an honor to get to march there. The fourth group I would pick... Oh, the blue coats. I know, shocking. I having March blue coats myself and then not being my number one. Um, I love Tom Merrick's writing. I love the st music they played. I think this last year was one of the best blue coats show ever. Um, and it would be an honor to get to go March there again. Um, for twenty twenty four. My third choice would be the Blue Devils. I, I, the writing this year is so, so, so cool. I, I love how relaxed they play. Um, I love how the, the HLs and the DHLs that they have and how the notes seem to come out of nowhere. Um, Howl's Moving Castle was so much fun to learn. Um, and it, it was a really cool year for the Blue Devils. I, I think I've slept on their front ensemble a little bit. Um, and I, they would be my third choice where I'd want to go to March. In number two... The Troopers, another group I think that gets slept on a lot. Um, they had so many notes. They had so many parts of their show that got ramped up. I think they might have beefed their book more than any other front ensemble this year. Um, and the, the Troopers' Marimba line is just incredible. Um, it would be an honor to get to march there and, and to get to learn from that pedagogy. Um, and I, I, I'm overwhelmed with how much I'm impressed by what they do. Um, and that leaves one group left. And my, my first choice, if I could march anywhere this last year, would have been Vanguard. Um, maybe not the big of a shocker. Everyone loves them, and their, their front ensemble writing is incredible. I mean, it would be a, a joy and an honor to get to learn from the, the Renix and, and to get to play that material um, with how how woven in every single technique is uh, to, to the literature and with how beautiful the harmonies are. I, I love the, the A-flat major uh, Lydian stuff that went to the, the G mixolydian, like in the opener theme. Um, I, I loved all the different stuff they chose to do this year. Um, and so this would be my ranking of where I would go March if I could go back in time and not be aged out for the 2024 season with the knowledge I have after doing this project. Oh, and I might get fired if I don't forget to mention, I teach in CDC, so if you want to be taught by me, uh, audition for Music City this year. It'll be a lot of fun. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you want me to count your own notes, send me a message over email, um, nickatferris.org, and I'd be happy to count your book as well, and we can see how it compares to DCI or WGI books. Um, if you want to see this spreadsheet or interact for, for yourself, check out the link in the description. Um, and I hope you enjoy. Um, leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you next time.